Good morning. Um, I'm hoping that the audio and the video start to sync up on these things. I don't know why they're so kitty wampus. Um, we're just going to leave the cat to do what the cat does today, apparently. Um, hi, it is my first video of 2017. Uh, welcome back. My name is Tina Miller. Um, some of you guys know this because it's like, you know, in the name of my YouTube channel. And um, I realized after watching somebody else's first video this morning that um, it's nice to have a face, but it's nice to have a name to put to the face. Usually in life, we're the other way around. Um, but anyway, so today is Wednesday, January the 4th, uh, 2017, first video of the new year. Uh, the new year is starting out to be exceptionally stellar in our world, and by exceptionally stellar, what I mean is, um, could I get a refund on cars, even if they were bought like eight years ago? Uh, cars hate us. So anyway, um, hi, I hope you guys are having a good new year, that your new year is starting out better than mine. Um... I have high hopes for this year. Uh, this is going to be a short video because I'm just going to kind of talk about New Year, New Year resolutions, and the direction we're going to be going here. Um, so, okay. So I had mentioned in my last video that I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with videos in the upcoming year. Whether I wanted to scrap this project entirely, whether I wanted to cut down on how many videos I do, whether I wanted to maybe increase, how I wanted to do it. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I'll still do my weekly videos, um, I'm going to put more of a focus on creation during these videos. So I'll have, you know, a video where I'll do crafting. I'll have, and that'll be like some kind of a handcraft. I'll, I'll show kind of the things that I make. I'll have a video where I'll do, um, um, like kitchen witching. I'll have videos that are informative and then I'll just have kind of a free video and I'll, I figure I'll follow a pattern of these month after month I'm not going to do the weekly charity I'll probably just do one charity a month I'm making notes as I talk this out with you um, the reason I want to just do one charity a month is because part of what was overwhelming me with last year was trying to find charities that um, didn't send up every red flag in the world right off the bat and you got to figure a year is 52 weeks. That's 52 charities that I have to kind of try and come up with. And it's not that I can't come up with things. It's just that when I when I feel like I have to do something, uh, my brain kind of goes, boof, and it's gone. And I can't get the brain to do what it needs to do. So um, we'll do one charity a month. I'll probably do that the first video of each month. We'll have a charity. Uh, and I will try and do charities that are actually near and dear to me, which means I might repeat some from last year. And that's okay, because every time I do a video and talk about a charity, that is a brand new introduction of that charity to someone. So that saves people having to go back and watch every flippin' video of me I mean, and I and and, and and the cat, and nobody wants to watch all of that over again. <clears throat> So anyway, so that's kind of the that's kind of the structural goal of the videos. We are going to still do weekly videos. I'm going to still try to do them on Wednesdays. I might change the day. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Yes, that is an appropriate place to clean yourself. Right there on the floor where nobody can see your shame. Um, so we will have one week a month will be something crafty. One week will be something kitchen witchy. One week will be something informative. I'll, I'll actually... Um, share something with you that I'm, I'm uh, proficient at and then one week will be kind of a free video which is what this week is if there's five weeks then it's just the apocalypse we're all gonna die I, I will figure something out um, one charity a month usually the first week of the, the, the month now I, um, I had mentioned also in the last video that uh, I have a cold so you could still hear this I'm still dealing with all the the, the, you know, the fun aftermath of having a really wicked cold. Um, <clears throat> so I apologize for the throat clearing, the snorting and snuffling, and all the other disgusting sounds. Uh, but the other thing I had mentioned in the last video was that I didn't really know yet what my, what my quote-unquote resolution was going to be. Um, every year I 
choose something that I want to focus on. We all do. Um, but I don't choose things like, you know, lose more weight because, God, with a body as fabulous as this, who needs to lose weight, huh? Uh, I know how that resolution goes. You know, join a gym. That's great for the first week and a half, maybe, and then you spend uh, roughly 24 months after that paying for a gym membership that you never use again, except once in a while when you've eaten a full cheesecake and feel you you got to go hit the weights. Um so I don't do resolutions like that. Um, they're set up for failure because you go gung-ho into something, but you don't put the support around whatever that resolution is, so it inevitably fails. I would much rather find ways through my year to change what I do, change what I eat, change how I function, to kind of change different aspects of my life. Um, but what I do like to do is I do like to make um, resolutions of sorts, goals of sorts for project or help that I can do for other people. Um, and last year's goal was my 200, what it started out as 100 hours of community service. It, uh, midway through the year, I had to up that to 200 hours of community service because I had already reached my 100 hours. So this year, I am going to set a goal of 200 hours of community service, and we'll see how that goes. But in addition to the 200 hours of community service, because I don't know that I can boost that up to 300 hours because that's a lot of time. And when you're self-employed, you spend a lot of time working, um, even when you're not at the shop or you're not actively in piano lessons, you still spend a lot of time running around and doing things. So <clears throat> in addition to that 200 hours, I want to utilize some of the other things that I do. Um, so I have a project goal, a major project goal for this year, and I don't know if I'm going to reach it. And if I don't, that's fine, because every bit of it that I finish helps somebody. Um, but my project goal for this year is to make 12 quilts over the course of the year, 6 afghans, 12 prayer shawls, 24 winter hats, and 12 winter scarves. Um, so what this means is I should be doing a quilt, a prayer shawl, two hats, and a scarf every month. And that sounds like a lot, but in the right circumstances, I can pound out a prayer shawl in about two days. Um, I can pound out probably about three or four hats in a day, and I can do a scarf in about an hour and a half to two hours, um, depending on how I'm doing them. Quilts, I have probably... I'd say almost two dozen quilts that are far enough along that it shouldn't take me more than a couple of hours each to finish them out because I do very simple quilting. Um, and afghans, that just means I have to do one every two months. So I have two months to pound through, say, a scrappy and get it together. Um, and then, yeah, so that's my project goal for this year. Um, I am hoping next Tuesday to... Um, I, I've, I've been told that there is a Methodist group in town that does prayer shawls every Tuesday morning, and it's my hope and goal to go next Tuesday and see if this is indeed an open group, if it's an active group. Um, I actually talked with somebody yesterday who was a recipient of one of the Methodist prayer shawls about four years ago when she lost a family member. Um, so I know that they are active in their community, or were active in their community, so I want to go find out if this is a group that I can join because... I, I miss socializing with people, and it'd be nice to have local people to socialize with as well. Uh, one of the things that I that I am saddest about with our house, we love our house, we love our little community, but I am lonely here. I am very lonely here. Um, it's a hard thing to admit when you're lonely, um, but I am. Uh, I want to get to know my community better, and in a small town, it's sometimes hard to break in and get people to see you and want to talk to you, um, especially if you might look a little bit different or act a little bit different or, you know, don't necessarily attend their churches or their usual soirees. So, you know, this is an opportunity that's comfortable for me where I can meet some new people. Um, is that it? I had something else I was going to say. It was really fabulous. It's going to change the world. Um, something about goals. 
of biscuits. Um, hopefully it'll come to me before I finish the video. If not, I'll try and put it in the comments. Um, it's gonna drive me nuts. Anyway, uh, the brain. Um, so that brings us to charity. Um, I want to do one charity this month, and I'm picking Polar Plunge Wisconsin. Um, okay, so everybody kind of knows what the term Polar Plunge means. Most people think, if they're, if they're not associated with charities, most people think of the word Polar Plunge and they think of a bunch of lunatics on New Year's Day jumping in a frozen lake. And it really is, that's, that's not the Polar Plunge I'm referring to. The Polar Plunge I'm referring to is a bunch of lunatics that jump into a frozen lake on a different day of the year. But for a good reason. Um, so Polar Plunge is a, uh, it's a, it's a charitable organization, and what they do is they support Special Olympics. So Polar Plunge has been around since 1999, uh, and they've raised close to 19 million dollars, I'm reading some of this off their site, close to 19 million dollars for Special Olympics athletes in Wisconsin alone. Um, what Special Olympics, what this, what these donations provide for, is they provide for uh, training, they help support um, Olymp Olympic type sport events for folks who have um, intellectual disabilities. They provide health care healthcare screenings um, for the uh, for the competitors during their during the games during competition. Um, and the reason they do this is because it allows people to have an opportunity to get out there and be physical to compete and and really to have a, a more of a sense of normalcy in their life rather than constantly being looked at as a disability. Um, so I've done Polar Plunge many, many times. I don't know how many times I've done it now because, well, quite frankly, the frozen lake freezes your brain cells. Um, some years I've raised money for it and I haven't been able to plunge for one reason or another. Like my very first year that I raised for Polar Plunge, I was very, very excited about doing it. I raised a good amount of money. I uh, got all ready to go and then I got hit with pneumonia before uh, Plunge started. Uh, so I, obviously I was not going to jump into a frozen lake with pneumonia because, well, gee, <laughs> I, I don't know. So, you know, I've had years where I couldn't because, like, now I'm sick. Um, but the Polar Plunge locally is going to happen in Madison, and it happens on February 18th. Um, I actually met a young plunger last night. This is her first year, and she's very excited. And I, uh, I'm going to try and have plunge cards in my shop. And these are the little cards that you can, like, you buy them for a dollar, and you put your name on them, they put them up on the wall. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry. So, um, I'm hoping to get some plunge cards in the shop here before too long. Uh, but what you do is, you show up at the plunge site with all of your money, and something that you can jump in the water in. They have giant, two giant tents that are heated, they're like big circus tents. Um, one for women and one for men, and so you can go in and you can change ahead of time if you want to, and then you you were you are assigned a plunge time, and it's an approximate time, but it's pretty close. You stand in line, you follow the queue all the way up to a hole that they've carved in the ice, and then they do a countdown and a photo, and then you jump, and then you forget everything for the next two hours because your body goes into complete and total shock. So. Um, and then when you get out, there's hot tubs. There's a local company that sets up multiple hot tubs so that you can go and, you know, get in some warm water. And then you can trot back to the big tent, which is, of course, heated. And you could dry off and change into your nice dry clothes and go home. There's also a bar nearby that supports the plungers both before and after the jump so that you can go in and get your insides warmed up, too. Um, but it's, it's kind of a, a neat organization. The last time I did it, actually, my, um, my husband and my father recommended that, that perhaps be my last jump because, um, when I went in, there were a lot of circumstances around this, so it, this is not typical, but when I went in, I, uh, lost my footing and couldn't regain my footing. They sent the guys in the wetsuits in after me, um, and then when I came out, I had a small asthma attack. So it was not an enjoyable experience for me. But I've done this. Um, I've raised as a solo person, and I've raised as part of a group before. But this is a good project. So, you know, keep in mind that um, 
the 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 jumping in the lake part that that really isn't the important part. Um, the jumping in the lake part is just to draw attention to the cause that it's supporting. So if you guys see the little polar bears out, um, you know, at your local gas station or your shops or your restaurants, throw a dollar towards Special Olympics. They could use it. Those kids are good people. Um, all those people in there are good people. It's not just kids. It's all kinds of people. Um, I don't remember what it was that I was going to say before, which kind of drives me crazy. Um, it had to do with the shop, too. But I'll be darned if I can remember. So anyway, oh, 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 I remember now. I remember now. One of the other goals I have this year, which is a completely selfish goal, is I'm going to try and turn my, um, I'm going to try and turn my Minecraft obsession into money. So that means I'm going to attempt to figure out how to do videos and stream um, and other things. There's some other stuff I'm looking at. So if you have any interest in Minecraft, keep an eye open for that. If you have no interest in Minecraft, keep an eye open for that so you can stay away. Um, so anyway, that's my spiel for the day. This is a little bit longer video, I thought. Okay, look at that. 16 minutes. Woo. Uh, I hope you guys are all having a wonderful new year and that this new year brings you lots of amazing blessings. Um, you know, we're coming into a year where there's a lot of uncertainty politically. I think a lot of people are nervous. Um, or downright afraid, we're going to be fine. We're going to live through this. It doesn't matter. You know, it'll all be okay. It'll all be okay. Um, so I hope this is a good year for everyone. And uh, stay tuned this year, and we'll see what we see. Uh, have a good one. Catch you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.